Today I wanted to talk about Evil Land 2. Now, I was going to do a review on Evil Land 1, but then this game came out and I was now I'm doing a review on this and all the work I put into 1 is wasted. So that happened. Anyway, I don't have a problem with that because I am so happy with this new game. It is such an improvement on the first one that I just couldn't help but gush a little. The first big thing is consistency. The first Evil Land didn't really have any consistency in terms of both gameplay and story. As you progressed further in the story, the game would just switch on you completely out of random and now you'd have to adjust to this new game type. Sometimes it'd follow the same hack and slash style, but for the most part, something would change and you'd have to adjust with it. In the new one, where this does happen, there is a piece that never changes. You have a consistent level system that constantly has an effect on what part of the game you're in. Now this means that when the game type changes up on you and now suddenly you're fighting Final Fantasy style, you're still doing the damage of whatever level you are. You're still doing the damage of a level 20 character compared to a level 10 character. In the original, you only had a level system during the Final Fantasy turn-based style of fighting. Here it applies to that, the free roam, the other game segments, everything. Now I said the story was also taken a big upgrade too. In the original, you were just kind of a hero in the right place in the right time, and you were always just put into a dungeon and told to fight a boss. This game, for the most part, you're still the hero in the right place in the right time, but the story's much deeper. You have characters with a lot more emotions and feelings behind them, connected to things that are actually happening around you. Characters to remember and things that are said to keep track of if you want to figure out what you're doing next in the game. I mean, even within your own party, you have your characters arguing at times over the things that you should and shouldn't be doing. You're even given the option at times to agree yes or no with a person, which will change the dialogue. It doesn't do anything to the story, but it allows you to interface with it a little more. The original just said, you go slay this monster and that's it. This new story involves time travel, gods, demons, mana, uh, an empire, world devastation, and this ancient race that kind of invented time travel. Even though you never actually see anyone of them use it. Back to the gameplay, this game has RPG elements up the wazoo. It has taken from pretty much any RPG you or I could think of. Unless you know like a really obscure one, maybe. I don't know. It has dungeons, quests, side quests, fetch quests. Those annoying quests where you just walk back and forth and talk to someone over and over again. But overall, the story of the game will push you further rather than have you stand around and think, what the hell am I supposed to be doing? And the side quest, for the most part, consists of finding an upgrade that helps you in battle, or finding the collectible stars, which don't actually affect the game, but they give you something to do. Aside from the quest, it also has classic RPG puzzling. Physical puzzles of walking on panels in a certain order, to very standard puzzles where you'll have to look at a page and try to figure something out. Now these puzzles are hardly ever the same, and they are a little challenging, but they're not overdone. This game has a good level of puzzles where they're challenging and fun, but not completely surrounding you and you get sick of them immediately. Then there's also the game of cards. Now this is secondary in the game, but it's a lot of fun. It's a mini game within the world. It's sort of like Yu-Gi-Oh within a land of RPG. You run around the entire world of Evil Land, challenging people to this card game, and if you can defeat them, you will obtain a new card, making your own deck stronger. Now the game itself is pretty basic, but its simplicity makes it much more complicated because it is very tricky to defeat your opponent when you start out with three basic card types and they have like one special card that's super hard to defeat. I'm not saying it's impossible to defeat them, I'm just saying at first it's going to be tricky and you're going to have to work your way up the ladder fighting more powerful opponents. Now that's a cool feature because most games that involve a secondary card game element, usually you just like walk into a bar or something and challenge some guys to poker at a table. In this case, you actually have to run around. Hell, you can even play against one of the previous bosses in the game. Now to the core of what Evil Land is. Evil Land is a game where you play through multiple different game types across RPGs and games in general. From classic Legend of Zelda to beat-em-ups to Street Fighter to bullet hell shooters. This game has way more than just its own game in it. Also, you can tell just how nerdy the game makers are in this game. There are tons of references, absolute, li literal tons of, of references, everywhere. 
Like, you can't play this game for more than, like, 20 minutes without seeing at least four references to something, whether you think it's a reference or not. All that being said, this game does have a few problems. There will be certain segments of the game that are just absolutely hard as hell to defeat, and you'll have to go at them again and again. It's... I don't want to compare it to Dark Souls, because I was playing on the easy difficulty, but I was still having trouble. In particular, vertical segments are absolutely horrific. They are horrible. They're... Because the varying game types are just a small segment of the entire game, they didn't get as much care in terms of control, so it can be a little frustrating trying to get it just right. While the controls for the overall game fit very nicely, the little segments can use some touch-ups. But because of that, you'll end up dying over and over again in segments which otherwise would be very easy. One big solution for what I just complained about would be controller support. This game doesn't have it. The, the Evil Land 1 had it. Evil Land 2 doesn't have it, which does not make sense to me. I have been playing with the keyboard, which has been complete hell. Every segment where I've needed to jump, or every segment where I've needed to move a little bit better than the WASD allows me, I keep dying, or I have a lot of trouble. It would really just be solved just by plugging a controller in and being done with it. So now, I ask the question, is Evil Land 2 worth it? Yes, actually. I know I just complained about the game being hard in places, but overall the experience is tons of fun. This game feels like a classic RPG that references every other RPG, whether you say that the game makers were ripping off every other RPG or commend them for learning from every other RPG, they still created a nice product. The look, the sound, and the playing of this game all flow very nicely, with the premise of games changing over time. While the game changing up on you here and there is sometimes a hassle, it's something you won't see in many other games and it's a fun experience. You get Evil Land, and then suddenly you're playing Street Fighter, or you're playing a bullet hell shooter, or you're playing Mario, or you're playing Legend of Link. On top of that, you get the game of cards, which is just fun on its own once you get up to that point in the game. And honestly, if you're just generally a nerd and just enjoy nerdy culture, you'll get a huge kick out of this game. I wasn't joking when I said there were tons of references. Seriously, I am Bioshock at all these references. Doctor Whoever came up with all these Easter eggs as a League of Legend. All these connections and links. Sometimes you'll think it's a reference just because it looks so alien. This game is the bomb, Erman. And I know earlier I complained about the controller support, but I'm almost certain that's going to be in an update. I mean, the other game had it. I can't see why they would leave it out of this one. So yeah, is Evil Land 2 worth it? Yes. Yes, it is.